write log of x in terms of log a, log b, and log c. x is going to be equal to a times c to the 1 half divided by b cubed, quantity raised to the fifth power. So I'll start by applying log to both sides of our equality. So that gets me log x. Now we just need to unwind what's happening on the other side. So that'll be the application of a few rules for logarithm. So first up, I want to take the exponent on the outside, take that and put it in front of the log. So that's our exponent rule for logarithm. If you have an exponent on the inside, you can bring it to the front. Then we have a quotient on the inside. So we'll apply the quotient rule for logarithm. That says if you have a quotient on the inside, you can write it as a difference of two logarithms. Okay, the minus sign is going to apply to the denominator. So we're going to get this. Next, we have a product inside of a logarithm. So we'll use the product rule for logarithm, which just says you can write it as a sum of two logs. So here we'll have log a plus log c to the 1 half. And now you notice there's no more factoring going on. So the only step I'll have left is just to take the exponents out of each term. So when I do that, I can bring the 1 half out in front of the log here. And then on the b cubed, I can bring the 3 down out in front of this log. OK, so now all I need to do is distribute the 5 through everything. Okay, we want to be careful with parentheses. And so we're going to get this for our answer. 5 log a plus 5 halves log c minus 15 log b. In the other direction, write n in terms of x, y, and z, where log of n equals 2 log x minus a fifth parentheses log y minus 3 log z. So we're just going to go through all our steps from the previous problem in reverse order. Now here, my first step is going to be to distribute through the minus 1 fifth. I'm going to want all the constants out in front of our logarithm, no parentheses, and then we'll take those constants and put them up on the exponents on the inside. So push that minus 1 fifth through, that gives me 2 log x minus a fifth log y plus 3 fifths log z. We could take all those coefficients out in front and just put them up as an exponent on the inside. So we'll get an x squared, a z to the 3 fifths, and here I'll leave the minus sign out in front. We just push that up to get y to the 1 fifth. Now, we could start combining things. So it doesn't matter what order you combine as long as you're consistent in what you do. So I'm just going to combine our first two terms first. So we're going to use the quotient rule backwards. I have a difference here, so I can rewrite this as log of x squared over y to the 1 fifth. We'll leave this term alone. Now we have a sum. So now what I want to do is take this term and this term, multiply them together, put them on the inside of log. So that's our product rule for log. So we wind up getting this. And now to finish, we just note I have log of n equal to log of our thing on the inside. If I have log of something equal to log of something else, the two things on the inside are going to be equal. So that means n is equal to x squared z to the 3 fifths over y to the 1 fifth. Now, just to get back to my trick here, if I have two logs equal to each other, why do the insides have to be equal? Well, if I suppose I have log of a equal to log of b, I could take both sides, put them up above 10 as exponents. Okay, if two things are equal, putting them up as the exponents over 10, what comes out of that stays equal. But now, 10 to the log, okay, this is log to the base 10, that's going to collapse, leaving me with an A on one side and a B on the other. So that's going to mean the insides are going to be equal. 